Welcome to another Bachelor Recap here at Nikki Lee Bakes. This was week three, which was another typical episode that you usually see in the early part of the season. It starts out with Luke P refreshing our memory about how Hannah was getting emotional during the rose ceremony the night before. And the way that he was talking about it, it felt like a little bit insincere, like he was trying not to smile almost, trying too hard maybe. But either way, this was foreshadowing for how the rest of the episode was going to go. So group date card comes out and Tyler's on it, which I'm slightly bummed about, but then also Cam. We'll get into more about him later. I also just wanna make a side note that every single outfit Hannah wears fits her to like a T and she looks great, and I just wanna know what her workout routine is. But anyway, they get to this date, and I am so excited to see Jason Biggs there. Normally on this show, they bring in this special guest star, and nobody knows who it is. But this is Jason Biggs, and he's really funny. I was hoping that he'd have a little bit more of a, like a role in the date. He kinda, it was just quick, but it was still fun to see him. But the whole concept of this date, I'm wondering to myself, why has this never been done before? because this is like the perfect test for your future husband. Not necessarily the pain part of all of it, but like understanding pregnancy, caring for a child. Granted, they're not real babies, but still, that's something I would wanna see. You don't really get that test during these eight weeks of The Bachelor. But the birth scenario in this date, in my opinion, was the best part. I liked the anatomy part too, which Tyler C. apparently didn't pay attention in high school health or middle school health for that matter. He did not know what was going on, but he did make up for it when he was cutely, you know, cradling the baby in the rocking chair. Guys, he's my favorite. And he was also hilarious when he was getting zapped. Jed was really cute too during that, but my favorite of all was Sean Paul Jones. So his reaction to the pain was really funny, but Hannah's reaction <laughs> was the best. She was making like legit screams <laughs> like of agony as John Paul Jones is squeezing her hand so hard. <laughs> I, I'm just laughing thinking about it. And she's like, I'm sorry, you probably saw it. I, uh, I just thought it was so funny. But that date was great, I liked it. So then they get to the cocktail hour and this is where all the drama starts. Truthfully, these guys are more dramatic than the group of girls on The Bachelor. It all starts with Cam just coming out and saying all these things. I can't even remember how it was brought up, but everything he's saying is clearly going to tick off the rest of the guys. And I can't tell if this was set up by like the producers egging him on or if it's just Cam being his ABC self. He's an interesting character. I don't hate him. We'll get into that more later. But aside from that, there were some good conversations, especially the one between her and Mike, where Mike opens up about his failed relationship and his lost baby. And it was nice to see him open up about that. But I also, that whole conversation made me kind of like Hannah even more. Just like the way that she hugged him and comforted him. And she just seems like a really genuinely caring, down to earth person. But then as we all know, Cam comes and butts in during this. In his defense, I'm sure he doesn't know that they're having a really intense conversation. And he did kind of just happen to come at a bad time. But I'm thinking in my head, oh, he's being mature about it. He's saying like, hey, I wanna talk, just come and find me when you're done. And I'm like, wow, good for you, Cam. That was really grown up. Um, but then he just walks over and stands there. Then he walks in again, because apparently whatever he needs to talk about is really important. Clearly, Hannah, you're being extremely inconsiderate. Why aren't you thinking about Cam? And I'm like getting mad because Mike, this is probably like one of the most important conversations that he's planning in his head that he needs to have with Hannah. This is potentially his future wife. And this could be the first time that they ever speak about this and Cam is coming in and spoiling it. Like, do you get it? Do you know what I'm saying? He's ruining that first encounter all because there's something really important, just really important that can't wait. What, and what's so important? He had to resign from a job. Oh my. Now I understand that was that's a very pressing matter. Here's the thing about Cam. I don't actually think he means any harm. I really just think he doesn't have the social capacity to understand that what he's doing 
is inconsiderate. Like he, I don't just don't think he gets it. I don't think it was in his head like, oh, I'm gonna come out here and just ruin Mike's time. No, I think he just really doesn't get it. And then it's funny because when he finally gets time, he cuts in, talks to her. Hannah seems completely uninterested. She kind of had this face like, while he's talking to her about this really significant time in his life where he quit his job. And I was just thinking like, she's just going through the motions because they wanted Cam to stay on the show and she's just gotta go with it. But he literally, I mean, Cam had maybe 10 seconds and then that other guy swoops in and I forget his name, but this part I think was almost worse than Cam coming into the conversation with Hannah and Mike. My stomach was turning the whole time. It just was like, it, it was immature and it was a bad way to handle the situation. I think his main objective was to like get a pat on the back from the guys like, hey, you shut down Cam. Like when he went to talk to Hannah, I don't think he actually wanted to talk to Hannah. Hannah probably has no idea what your goal is here, like why you're even doing this. So she's probably thinking to herself like, wow, both these guys are idiots. And then the, the whole Cam situation clearly caused some discomfort between all the guys. Everybody's sitting there a little uncomfortable. It's quiet. There's weird silences. And then you just cut over to John Paul Jones and he's eating chicken nuggets. And just He's like a kid at a movie, like, and I realized, like, this this is why he needs to stay. He's the uh, comedic relief. I always love the awkward, funny person in the show. They're not there every season, but John Paul Jones. Also, where are the chicken nuggets always coming from? Mike gets the rose. The date ends overall. Good date. I like that one. So then we get the one-on-one -on -one date. And this goes to Connor, not my Connor, but the other Connor. And I'm excited that he gets it because we haven't really seen much of him. And I feel like he could be a likable guy. I was feeling so bad for him because he's just sitting there waiting to be picked up only to find out that the date is just canceled. I felt like he was trying to keep his composure, but really he was sad. But then he finds out he's going to her hotel suite. And the most important part of all of this is that we finally find out where the bachelorette stays during the mansion weeks. Gina and I had no idea. I mean, you know, like when they're traveling, they're staying in a hotel, everybody's staying in a hotel. But it was always, you know, the guys stay in the mansion, bachelorette says bye, she leaves, where she go? Well, now, now we know, she's got a hotel and it's wicked nice. But anyway, I remember this whole scenario happening in a past season. I I think it was Jillian's season. The whole thing with like your date gets canceled because you're sick. So now we're just going to chill out at my house. That's like the best possible scenario. Like you can, you know, you're riding in helicopters. You're going on a private, private island. It's, it's not real. So now finally you're like at home having a date or just a day that would be more like everyday life. So I was excited that we had something like this and Connor killed it he freaking killed it before he even goes over there he gets her a card soup flowers perfect then he ends it with like all those cute little the sticky note scavenger hunt like geez this guy but i mean you know he did all those thoughtful things but even during the date that went great too he was just sitting there having good conversation with her comforting her everything felt very natural and there weren't any like awkward silences they just they had a really good date good for you connor and then i was excited that he got that quick surprise date at the end which i don't think was necessary i thought that they had just a good date in general but then he gets the rose so that was good and then they go to their very first live band slow dance thing of the season happens all the time but normally you're like who is this person and then the people on the show are pretending that they know who the person is, even though they probably don't. But this one I actually knew. I didn't know the guy's name, but I knew the song. So that's that's what I care. And I like the song. Then we get to our last group date. Tyler G goes home. They don't even like give us a tiny little bit of a hint as to why he leaves. Did he choose to leave? Did he get kicked off the show? What happened? I still don't know. That's all I was thinking about. Actually, first I was like, wait, who's Tyler G? But looked him up and remembered he's the Tim Tebow guy. So anyway, so we get to the date. Every season, sorry, I keep touching on all these cliches, but there's always a sponsorship. And this one happens to be The Secret Life of Pets, which is fine. 
Um, Because I actually, I thought the date was funny. Also, did you see how Grant went up and just like introduced himself to the photographer? I thought that was really nice. Like it's, that's a, a polite gesture. And Hannah wasn't even around to see it. And then this date also brings Demi back to do her spying. And originally I thought it was like really lame. It was on the first episode. But then I started thinking about it and it was like kind of cool in the sense that Hannah can watch these guys in the scenarios that she wouldn't normally be able to watch them in. You know, like she doesn't see these interactions until the show airs. And it was fun to see all the female employees like totally setting the guys up, trying to get them to slip up a little bit. But they all did great. Grant did great. Unfortunately, Luke P did great. Ugh, I was really hoping that he would screw up, but he didn't. Of course he didn't. Then the cocktail party starts, but this is the best part of the show because she's finally realizing that Luke P has got some issues and she's just calling him right out, basically telling him that he doesn't deserve to think he's got it in the bag and he's got to be more respectful of other relationships. And I loved that. It's like a really, ah, uh, it's just, this show is crazy because it's not a normal scenario. You know, like if you were ever to say that in everyday life, like your boyfriend, you have to be respectful that I'm going to be kissing other guys. What? So I get it. Ah, oh, it's just, ugh. I mean, I think she had to be harsh like she was because he just doesn't get it. I mean, at one point she even just rolled her eyes at him. But he really, he doesn't get it because here he is saying like, okay, no, I'm glad we had this conversation. I'll be better. And then he gets like 10 times worse. Even standing in front of guys, like putting up a physical barricade, like, no, I'm talking to her next. He was really getting on my nerves. I mean, the fact that she had that conversation with him, I was thinking, you know, this, this could maybe be what turns Luke around. Maybe he's really just like not realizing, you know? But no, his true colors just came out in fireworks. Tailgate party comes and, oh wait, no, Peter the pilot, one more thing. I like him, except he referred to her as Hannah Chelsea Brown, so it makes me like him a little less. And then he, he uses the phrase, the greatest takeoff and the greatest flight of my life. And my liking lessened even a little bit more. But okay, tailgate party. Cam kicks it off by saying his final goodbyes before anything's even happened. But apparently, good thing he did. And he's telling the guys that he desperately needs to talk to her because the information that he's going to share is information that just ruined his previous two relationships. And I'm thinking like, what happened in this job resignation that it, your girlfriends were like, oh, no thanks. But then he finally gets into the conversation with Hannah and now I get it. It wasn't the resignation that ruined the relationships. It was his amputation. He lost his wiener, right? I mean, that's the only conclusion I could come to for that. I can see why that would hurt a relationship. Then he goes on to mention the death of a grandparent, how he lost his puppy, and I'm realizing that he is touching on every single one of those onion layers that he was talking about. Every single one. And there's nothing left to find out about Cam. He just left it all out on the table. Here's the thing that I really didn't like and where I felt like I had to defend Cam a little. Not that I could from my couch. Mike takes it upon himself to say that Cam is looking for a pity rose. But like Cam never mentioned anything about a pity rose. Mike was just making that assumption based on the conversation. While Cam was talking to Hannah, he didn't come out and tell her that he was saying his goodbyes to the guys. He wasn't really looking for sympathy in what he was telling her. He was just coming out and sharing important information with her. I don't, I don't think that his intentions were calculated. So that kind of like turned me off from Mike. You should, first of all, you shouldn't feel threatened by Cam. He's gonna get sent home on his own. Mike was out of place there because now Hannah's in a position where she has to have these conflicted feelings. Like she can't just come up with her own information is being put into her head. She has to try to put pieces together to a puzzle that's not even like a whole puzzle. And Cam's trying to defend himself when really, I honestly, I think it's just a, a social thing with him. Like, I can see why she would think it was slimy, the timing of it, but I don't think he meant anything. I really think he just doesn't get it. But on a lighter note, Tyler C. and the tight end, yep, 
So that about sums up this episode, aside from the rose ceremony. Tyler C. got a rose and so did John Paul Jones. So that's all that I needed. But Cam is officially gone, so we are relying on Luke P. for all of the drama. Uh, but apparently Mike as well, which I can kind of see after that whole thing. So we'll see how that plays out. But I think that's it. Thanks for watching another one, and we'll see you next week for week four.